In this section, we will look at more examples of trigonometric equations and inequalities that are conditional. Remember, conditional equations with trigonometric functions can often be solved by analytic methods and with trig identities. Hi, my name is Tom Atwater. Let's go right to an example. Solve cosine 2x equals cosine x over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we have cosine 2x equals cosine x. So the two things I want to do would be subtract cosine from both sides and then change cosine 2x into a different formula where we just have cosine of x. Remember that cosine of 2x is equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So I make that substitution. And then the only other thing would be to rearrange this to make it look like more of a quadratic in that our variable would be the cosine x. And so we have cosine x as well as the cosine x squared here. So now we need to factor this. How does it factor? It factors into 2 cosine x plus 1 times cosine x minus 1. And that equals 0. Now, if both of these multiplied together equal 0, that means one of them must be 0. In other words, 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0, or cosine x minus 1 equals 0. In this case, then, we get cosine x equals negative 1 half by subtracting 1 and dividing by 2. And on the other side, we get cosine x equals 1. Now, for cosine x to equal negative 1 half, we come up with the solutions that x is equal to 2 pi over 3, or it's equal to 4 pi over 3. The solution for cosine x equals 1 is, of course, x equals 0. So we have three solutions, x equals 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. Now we can also graph this or solve this problem by graphing a function where I take this part of this and say that's equal to y and plug it into the calculator and then we can check for the x-intercepts which would then be the solution to this equation. So let's take a look at that graph. Here we see clearly that we have an intercept right here at x equals 0. This is the intercept of 2 pi over 3. This is the intercept 4 pi over 3. And although it's true it intersects here at 2 pi, remember 2 pi was a parenthesis meaning not including the value 2 pi for the interval. All right, so that's using the graph to solve that. Next, what I'd like to do is an example where we use the, a, an inequality instead. So let's take a look. Solve cosine 2x is less than or equal to cosine x, and cosine 2x is greater than, or equal, greater than cosine x. And that's over the interval 0 to 2 pi, not including 2 pi. Now, it's very easy to use the graph to solve this. So let's take a look at the graph, and we'll identify the x-intercepts, which we've actually already done previously. So what we have are x-intercept at 0, 2 pi over 3, and 4 pi over 3. And let me fill that in. In terms of the first one, cosine 2x is less than cosine of x. That would mean that cosine 2x minus cosine x 
is less than zero. And so we're looking for that section where the graph lies below the x-axis. And so that's what I've highlighted in red. My answer then will be the union of the interval from zero inclusive up to two pi over three. And actually, I made a mistake. This would not be inclusive because it's actually less than that. So we start at zero, but we cannot include zero. Then union, the next section starts at four pi over three. And again, we cannot include four pi over three because it's equal to zero at that point. Up to, but not including, 2 pi. So that's the solution for the first part, A. Now, for part B, what we're interested in is when 2 cosine, I'm sorry, cosine 2x is greater than cosine x. So when we look at the graph, we're interested in when is it positive. So let's take a look at when it's positive. All right, it's positive when we go from 2 pi over 3 all the way over to 4 pi over 3, not including those two endpoints. So this will be positive for the interval 2 pi over 3, comma, 4 pi over 3. And again, the endpoints are not included in our solution. OK, great job. When we are solving linear equations, sometimes we can use identities to help us solve the equation. Let's look at another example to illustrate this. Solve the equation 4 sine x cosine x equals the square root of 3 over the interval 0 to 2 pi. So this time what I have is 4 sine x cosine x equals the square root of 3. And I'm working with the same interval that we've had so far. Now, remember we had the identity that 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta. And I can use that identity in this particular example by realizing that I can split the 4 into 2 times 2. And if I do that, it would be 2 times 2 sine x cosine x, which means that it's 2 times the sine of 2x. And then that equals the square root of 3. What that means is that the sine of 2x equals the square root of 3 over 2. So we're solving here for 2x, but remember that we were given the range of our interval was 0 to pi, 2 pi, for just plain old x. Well, of course, we're looking for 2x, so we need to double, or in other words, double each one of these. Now, 2 times 0 is 0, then we get 2x, and this becomes 4 pi. The reason we need to be aware of this is that's going to increase the number of solutions that we have when we solve this problem. In other words, we have sine of theta, treating 2x like theta, equals the square root of 3 over 2, where theta can go from 0 to 4 pi. Therefore, the possible values for 2x are pi over 3, because that's our special angle, right? square root of 3 over 2. We could have 2 pi over 3. But continuing along, in other words, going around once again, we get 7 pi over 3. And we also get 8 pi over 3. But that's for 2x. So for x, of course, we've got to divide each one of these by 2. That would give me the solution set for x as being pi over 6, 
pi over 3. Then taking this one, 7 pi over 6. And the last one would be 4 pi over 3. And that's the solution for that original problem. Well, let's go to another example. And this one has what is called a half number identity, where the x value is being divided by 2. So solve sine of x over 2 equals the square root of 2 minus sine x over 2. And that's going to be over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So in this problem, we have sine x over 2 minus the square or equals the square root of 2 minus sine of x over 2. Again, these two can be combined, so I will add sine of x over 2 to both sides, so I get 2 sine x over 2 equals the square root of 2. Now, I divide both sides by 2, and I get sine x over 2 equals the square root of 2 over 2. Now, this time, we were given the interval for x to be from 0 to 2 pi. But we are interested in x over 2. So I need to divide each of these by 2. In other words, 0 is divided by 2 x divided by 2, 2 pi divided by 2. So I'm looking for answers for x over 2 that are from 0 to pi. In that case, x over 2 is going to be equal to pi over 4. Again, a special angle, you know, square root of 2 over 2. Or 3 pi over 4. So now we have to figure out just plain old x, which means we have to multiply each of those by 2. So we end up with x equals pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. And that's our two solutions. Well, now it's time for you to try a problem. Solve sine of x over 2 equals cosine of x over 2 over the interval 0 to 2 pi. Pause the video to work on this problem, and when you are finished, restart the video to check your solution. Welcome back. Let's see how you did on this problem. So we have sine of x over 2 equals cosine x over 2. The two angles are the same. If I divide both sides by cosine x over 2, then I'll have sine x over 2 over cosine x over 2 equals 1. But sine divided by cosine is tangent. So I have tangent x over 2 equals 1. By the same reasoning that we had before, we know that the range of our interval is for x over 2 is from 0 to pi. So I want tangent of x over 2 equaling 1, and x over 2 is between 0 and pi. Tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3. So I'm only going to have quadrant 1 that's within my range. So what I have then is x over 2 is going to equal pi over 4. Therefore, multiply both sides by 2, and we get x equals pi over 2 as our solution to that original equation. Great job. In this lesson, we looked at more examples of trigonometric equations and inequalities that are conditional. Conditional equations with trigonom trigonometric functions can often be solved by analytic methods and trigonometric identities. Be sure to work the exercises that your teacher assigns, and we'll see you next time.